if he drove for 480 miles at a speed of 60 miles per hour, how many hours were you driving? Pause the video and give that a shot. Now, you might be able to do this in your head just by thinking intuitively about it. That's great. But I hope that in addition to that, you also try doing it systematically using our unit notation. We're going for 480 miles. We're going to use a unit ratio, and we need to ultimately have an answer that's in hours. So now, what unit should I put down here? Well, I need to put a unit in the bottom that will cancel this unit up here. So now I have to put miles on the bottom. Why am I putting miles on the bottom? Because I want to cancel the miles up here, so we end up with hours. So notice now the number 60 has to go on the bottom, because the number 60 corresponds to miles. Since the miles are on the bottom, we have to put the 60 on the bottom. And hours gets the number 1. Now you can see we set this up correctly, because the miles cancel, and we're left with the units that we want, which is hours. And now remember that we're multiplying by the numbers up here, if you want to, you can see this is up here by putting it over 1, but we're dividing by numbers down here. So this really means 480 divided by 60. We can ignore the number 1. 480 divided by 60. That gives us 8 hours. Again, that might have been obvious to you just based on common sense, but it's good to see how we can use the unit conversion approach as well. This might be tricky for some people because it might feel weird to reverse the uh, ratio here and put miles on the bottom and hours on the top. How do you know what to put on the top and what to put on the bottom? Well, you work it out just the way we've been doing it. You ask, what do I need to put down here to cancel these units? And what do I need to put up here to get the units that, um, that I'm trying to get ultimately? Let's say you drive for 6,000 miles. How many hours did you drive for? You can go ahead and do that just based on intuition, but please also try to pause the video and write it out systematically using units. And we want to know how many hours it takes to go 6,000 miles. So we're starting with 6,000 miles. Then we're going to have a unit ratio, and then our target units are hours. That's a term I haven't used yet, but that's a useful term. Can you see why I call this the target units? These are the target units um, because uh, this is what the question is asking us about. And this is what we might call the given units, or the initial units, or the starting units. And now we're putting our ratio. What units do I need down here? I need to put miles on the bottom of the fraction to cancel these miles. And then I need hours on the top. Now, 60 goes with miles, so that goes on the bottom. And 1 goes with hours. And again, I hope you can see that this means 6,000 times 1 divided by 60. Well, we can ignore the 1, so this means 6,000 divided by 60. The miles have canceled. 6,000 divided by 60 is 100. It would take 100 hours to go 6,000 miles. How many hours would it take to go 45 miles? Give that a shot. The units we were starting, we are given, are 45 miles. Our target units are hours. We're going to use a unit ratio, I'm sorry, a ratio unit to convert from our starting units to our target units. We need miles down here to cancel the miles up here, and that means hours to the top. The number 60 goes with miles on the bottom. So now we have 45 divided by 60. 45 divided by 60. Well, that comes out to be 3 quarters of an hour. 3 quarters of an hour, or 0.75 hours, if you want to give it as a decimal. 0.75 hours, or 3 quarters of an hour. 45 divided by 60. Now, notice that in all of these problems, I've been giving you the distance. And the question has been asking you for the time. How would you solve this algebraically? If you're given the distance, and of course we already know the speed, which we could call the rate, or r. Well, the equation is distance equals rate times time. Now, our target here is time, so we can solve this equation for time. 
If we solve this equation for time, we get that the time equals the distance divided by the rate. Divide both sides by r. Time equals distance divided by rate. This is really the calculation we've been doing in all the examples. For example, 480 divided by 60 is 8. 6,000 divided by 60 is 100. And 45 divided by 60 is 0.75, which was the answer that we got here. So you could have solved all these by just plugging into this formula. Uh, but what I want to emphasize is that the formula really isn't necessary. Even if you've never heard of this formula, distance equals rate times time, you can still solve these problems just by focusing on the units and by having our understanding. And in many cases, you can actually solve the problem in your head if you have an intuitive understanding of what this ratio unit means. If you travel for 0.3 hours, how many miles will you get? Pause the video and give that a shot. Our starting units are the hours. 0.3 hours. Our target is the miles. We write down a ratio unit. What do we units do we have to put down here? Well, now we have to put hours down here. Because we want these hours to cancel these hours up here. That means miles go on the top. Now we can put in our numbers, 60 miles and one hour. 60 miles, 60 on the top, 1 hour on the bottom, the units cancel. And now we have 0.3 times 60. 0.3 times 60, which is 18. In 0.3 hours, we would travel 18 miles. How long would it take to travel 1.2 miles? Try to pause the video and work that out. Well, we're starting with 1.2 miles, and our target is hours. Now let's be careful about what unit we put on the bottom. Well, we need to put a unit down here that will cancel out the miles, so we need to put miles on the bottom. That leaves hours to go on the top. Where do we put this number 60? Well, the 60 corresponds to miles, so even though the number 60 is on top in this ratio, the number 60 has to go on the bottom in this ratio. And then we have the number 1. Now we're ready to do the conversion. The miles cancel. And we end up with 1.2 divided by 60. 1.2 divided by 60. You can use your calculator for that. 1.2 divided by 60 is 0.02 hours. Point oh two hours. In the last couple of examples, we've been switching back and forth between two different types of problems. In some of the problems, I told you the number of miles, and you had to figure out the number of hours. And in some of the problems, I told you the number of hours, and you had to figure out the number of miles. So hopefully now you have a systematic approach for doing any of those. So the method is, again, start by running down the initial starting units. Also write down the target units. Then you can write down the ratio, uh, the unit ratio, uh, the ratio unit, or whatever I'm calling it. So, um, how do you, and, and the key is, how do you figure out what units to put here on the bottom? Well, you want to put the units here on the bottom that will cancel these units over here. You want to put units on the bottom that will cancel your starting units. And then the other units automatically go on the top. And then make sure you put the numbers in the correct places as well. Notice that the number 60 is on the top of this ratio, but it has to go on the bottom of this ratio because over here the miles are on the bottom, and the 60 is associated with the miles. It's a good idea to keep writing down the number 1, even though it doesn't affect the calculations, just as a kind of placeholder. So I'm going to keep writing down the number 1, even uh, though it's not affecting the calculations. All right, and again, what we've seen then, then is this allows us to go back and forth between um, either the units on the top or the units on the bottom without having to look at any formulas from the textbook. Uh, and again, in many cases, you might not even have to do the unit analysis. You might just have enough common sense for the problem that you can do it in your head. For example, obviously, if you can go one hour, if you can go 60 miles in one hour, how far can you go in three hours? It should be obvious that you can go 180 miles. Um, or um, if um, you can go 60 miles in um, one hour, how long does it take you to go 30 miles? Well, it should be obvious that it would be half an hour. So for simple cases, you can just figure it out in your head without even doing the unit analysis. Um, but if you're not confident of that, you can always do this simple unit analysis to get the answer. Uh, again, 
um, no, no formulas are necessary if we know what the units are. So one of the big lessons from this series of videos is the importance of memorizing the units for all the concepts that come up in the course. It's really uh, crucial that you memorize the units for every concept that comes up in physics and chemistry because we've seen that knowing the units helps you to understand the concept. Knowing the units helps you to understand the concept. For example, even if you've never heard the word speed before, of course you have, but even if you've never heard the word speed before, if I tell you that the units are miles per hour, you can figure out what speed means. Um, you can figure out that it tells you how many miles you can go in one hour. So I very much encourage you to make flashcards for every single um, new units that come up over the course of your physics and chemistry course and make sure that you keep reviewing those flashcards and make sure that you have those units memorized. Um, they really help you in solving problems and also, getting a, also in getting an intuitive understanding of the concepts.